Hello YouTube, it's been a while. I thought I'd uh, try and drop this video in. I was hoping it would be in HD format. Unfortunately, the uh, camera I bought has, uh, well, it's turned out uh, not to be very good at all. It's a Microsoft uh, HD 5000, it turns out. Uh, it can only do 10 frames per second at uh, HD format, so I don't know what you can really do with that. It's a bit useless, to be honest with you. I'm going to try playing around with the settings, see if there's some aftermarket drivers, something I can do that's all get it working right but um, yeah it just seems to be a case of uh, misleading advertising it can do HD resolution but it can't do HD frame rate at that resolution but it can do 30 frames a second at sub VGA resolution at a, at a VGA resolution it uh, would only let me select up to 15 frames a second so a bit useless but um, yes what we were hoping to do was uh, dissect one of these or as you may see it, it's a basic single speed battery screwed back battery drill. That's a box standard cordless jobby. This one's uh, from Wix. Uh, got it from a friend of mine. It's uh, had no charger, so it's uh, you might hear it squeak very slightly. Yeah, very very plaintive wail there. It says the batteries are too low to turn the motor. But um, these things uh, tend to have planetary gearboxes in up here, and uh, they're quite useful for robotics, I'm thinking. So I've been dismantling a few of them, and I've got some uh, down there that are off screen, which are, you know, they're going to be very useful, I think. And it seems that a lot of these uh, cheaper ones, the single speeds, tend to use the same internal components as each other. So they're probably being knocked out by the same factory, or there's several factories of all borrowed each other's uh, injection moulding plans, so we're going to open one of these up, have a look at that, I suspect it is going to be the same, most because if you turn the clutch here, it clicks a total of 16 times, which means it has 17 little nooks in there to click through, and so the other two I already have. So let's uh, open this up, first of all we'll take the battery off, 15.6 volts, so it says. So not much use without the charger. Well, I'll leave the tablet will come off it myself. Turn her over. Standard. Let's see now. Do this quickly. I'll use my uh, homemade repaired battery driver. The batteries are dead, so nope. Can't really get in there. Too narrow. Too narrow. seen an awful lot of people using these except in a very raw state you know you take the entire drill put something around the trigger acts as a clutch uh, acts as a throttle rather but uh, I did find I think it's uh, Pi Minus One's uh, blog he has repurposed them he's, found, he's done a lot more in-depth research on these it seems There's several standard several standard um, I'll put my weight into this one several standard uh, gearbox ratios, so I'm not sure what the gearbox ratio is on this, but as I say, if I get them all the same, if I get them all the same, it won't really matter too much, I'll throttle them down, a bit of pulse modulation or some such, but um, you have been rehousing them, which is a quite nice job on, but uh, let's see if I can show this off, um, I couldn't try and take the chuck off, but uh, yeah, let's open this up to start with. Okay, missed any? No. Okay. Ooh, one. That. There we go. Ah, yeah, that looks about right. Now, the anatomy, the anatomy of one of these things is pretty simple. Obviously, you've got the battery connectors down here. Uh, here you've got the trigger mechanism. The trigger uh, serves two purposes. You see this little reverse and uh, forward selector. That switches a switch on the top here. Now all that does is change the polarity that goes into the motor. So it's simple as, simple as. You've got the power goes into here. This contains a small pulse width modulation circuit with uh, several positions on a slider switch. 
and that just as you press it down it moves further along increase the pulse with radio that sends that goes out here to a little uh, MOSFET transistor which uh, dump, dumps the main power that's that's where the, uh, the the high current end of it, because obviously the little tiny circuit in there couldn't handle it, so it's just knocking it up here. And then the power goes in here to do a simple reversing switch. So it's not it's not actually that complicated. That's a nice little circuit in there, but it wouldn't be able to handle anything without that uh, MOSFET. And of course that runs straight up into the motor there. Now, I can't find the side cutters, so we'll just do, use the cutting tool here. Yeah, these are actually good for a surprising number of amps, and it's, it's basically going to be down to uh, whatever MOSFET they've got. Some of them have the MOSFETs uh, built into the assembly here. You can see it's actually recesses down the side. Occasionally you'll find them with the MOSFET jammed on the side and a simple bit of uh, metal around them. Uh, obviously much cheaper ones, those, but uh, not this isn't. This is quite cheap, but it's not absolute bare bones cheap like uh, that would be. Right, so I'm going to take the housing off here. Now, what we've got uh, in here is the chuck. Now the chuck has, it's attached to the spindle by uh, regular thread. I believe it's a 3 8 UNF thread. And I have a tap and die set so I can briefly check because I'm like making up customer attachments. 3 8 UNF. And so you tap something to that, you can screw it straight onto the uh, chuck. So handy, it's a handy little tool to have there. Likewise, it's uh, and to have the uh, die set as well, match die set, in case you wanted to do something with the chucks. Anyway, the thread that was obviously unscrew if you're running it backwards though. So they've got a screw down the centre, which you probably can't see, and uh, that has a reverse thread on it. So you have to turn it as though you were going to tighten it up. Oh. It's loose. It's the first one of these that's been loose on. Let's turn it until you hear it start jumping on its thread. Now, you probably can't tell if I adjust the focus, maybe. If you compare that to a regular screw, you can probably see the thread is a mirror image. Obviously that's worth, that's worth noting, otherwise you can be there trying to turn the thing off itself and you'll never get there. This one, of course, is on the right way round. Just focus back. I don't know why I need an autofocus webcam in the first place. Alright, uh, let's give it a quick twist and it may come away. Or not. Let's try switching the... There. So I'm going to put this in the vice moment. Sometimes you'll find there's a little um, toothed section on the uh, spindle that you can first be able to get a span around or some such. This one does have one on the chuck, but unfortunately it's a bit too far in there, and obviously. So I'll have to lock the spindle shaft anyway. So we'll start by taking apart the gearbox then. So maybe to hold it from the inside. And this does look identical to the ones I've already done, which is a nice thing. We've got three screws here. This is probably what you'll see if you ever take apart a single speed battery drill. Oh, oops. This is a bit of a dissection rather than an autopsy, but uh, it's like a tear down, I suppose. Let me pop this off carefully so we don't lose anything. Not going to be for this end. Got three screws there. Let's look at this plate very briefly, just to note it is um, oriented. You've got little, you've got the little uh, tooth section here. That's usually just to stop the whole thing from twisting inside the housing. And indeed, if we go and get the housing, you can see. There's a little notch there, which that 
would slot into and just stop the whole thing turning in the frame of the thing. Okay, out again now. Right, so now we've got a uh, standard, yep, uh, nine tooth sprocket there. Quite a thick shaft on the motor, that's quite good to see. Uh, yeah, cheap, cheap little motor, so nothing fantastic about them. They're apparently are different uh, proper grades. I think the ones are 500, ones are 700, or it's like motor classes. So, but uh, I'm afraid I don't know what sort of variation there'll be between them. Anyway, I don't want to get my fingers sticky, so I'm using the needle nose pliers here. Now, let's take this metal plate off. This metal plate doesn't really do anything except uh, keep the gears from knocking against the uh, plate at the uh, front of the motor. <laughs> there. So that's. You can see on the other side there's marks from the uh, teeth. Oh, let's pop that on there. It just just keeps these uh, these gears in line. You can see the planetary gears there. If I start turning the, <laughs> if you see if it's jumping there, I forgot it was going to do this. That's because I've uh, wound the uh, clutch right up. So it's putting a lot of uh, force. On the the uh, annular gear here. Okay, so what we got here in the if you don't know, I'm only beginning about this so, but uh, planetary gear boxes the way they work. They've got the central sun gear. You've got the planetary gears here and a carrier. If you might be able to see underneath the uh, grease, and you've got the annular gear which goes around the outside. The way the clutch works in these is up this end. I'm careful not to let the things fall out just yet. When you turn this uh, jacket here, you turn a screw. Now, I'll get one of the other ones, actually. It'll probably be easier to see. Once I've, managed to get, once I've managed to get the chuck off, here's one I prepared earlier. Here is that piece. Obviously, it looks a bit different, but on the inside of this piece, if it'll move, it be persuaded. Okay, it won't be persuaded for some reason now. There we go, just needed something to force it. The inside of this contains a threaded piece. That locks onto the uh, moulding here, which prevents it from turning itself. So that means when you turn this, this piece is forced up and down because obviously this piece is uh, constrained by uh, a plate at the end. Now uh, we lost uh, one of the ball bearings there. That underneath, that's you've got the, spr <laughs> the spring here which applies the force, and under that you've got a simple metal ring plate that presses down on ball bearings here, and those ball bearings press down onto uh, so just a little. Um, Nubs, I'm not sure you really want to call them. It's basically sort of cam ish arrangement. The little nubs on the uh, top side of the annular gear here. So that means the more you've got this wound, the more that is pressed, wound down, pressing more force onto those ball bearings, which press more force on the annular gear. And that means if the annular gear has. it doesn't have very much force on it. It will stay where it's where it is. It will stay static in relation to the housing. But if it's held uh, static to the housing, if it's held static to the housing, then the gear train works as as it's supposed to. So you see, if I just hold it with my finger, I turn the chuck, it moves, it moves, it moves. But if it's slipping, the whole thing moves, and so there'd be no output. So using that spring and um, ball bearing mechanism, just allows you to adjust how much force it is until the annular gear starts slipping and um, it's just to save the motor and the gears really if you put too much force on to stall the thing it'll start um, making that horrible ta 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 noise and yeah it's, it's just it's a very simple system and obviously if you're doing something maybe dro you're using it for I don't know, driving something you know, like uh, wheels or anything where it might be uh, prone to getting just jammed up it, it, Right, as I was saying, before I ran out of uh, time on the recording, is that uh, 
if you're going to be using something for a sort of drive where it can uh, get stalled and you don't want to damage the motor, then you probably want to keep the clutch mechanism intact. Now what I've done there is just uh, tip it out, the ball bearings have gone everywhere unfortunately. But you can see on the annular gear these nubs, and what would happen was of course the mainspring would press the ball bearing plate down onto the ball bearings and they just sit there pressed up against it, holding this locked in place like that uh, until there's sufficient force for it just to skip over them and skip and skip and skip and start turning. And this is a very neat little system. Now you see the inner, the outer, the the final stage carrier there. That one uses these much chunkier metal gears. That's uh, unless you're using, you'll find in a, in maybe like uh, electric screwdrivers, they'll tend to use more like uh, plastic gears. Final stage gears are taking much less torque. But uh, of course, this has already been geared down once the initial stage. Will tend to use the plastic gears, and you can tell underneath the grease those are plastic. But uh, the output gears will generally be metal because they've got to handle much more force, otherwise, they'll just uh, crack to bits. But I'm uh, so quite happy with this, and it's a, it's a useful thing to know. Uh, this is going to be good. If I can get one more, I'll be very happy. But this again looks like a standard, identical to the other three points locking pin. It's got the mechanism, the ball bearings, the whole bit. In fact, uh, some of them, see, even when they've got different gear boxes, I've found that uh, some of the parts are still uh, interchangeable. And in fact, I think it's, uh, yes, the, the clutch mechanism off this fits this gearbox fine, but it actually came off a two-speed drill. And two-speed drills are a bit of a different beast, so if I'll just grab one of those quickly. Two speed drill, of course, has extra stages. Obviously this is one I've dismantled earlier, so you're not going to get the full experience of this one. Generally motor in the same arrangement, back end of here. The two-speed ones tend to ha only have screws connecting the front half and back half of the gearboxes. So Ron's starting to cut anything open, you actually find that you have to twist the motor's mounting plate off. It's got a little, like a bayonet cap arrangement there. Now, front end's much the same. Yeah, we actually got a, a uh, little slot there the spindle goes into. It allows a little more motion, I suppose, but uh, again, not important. You may, that may be permanently attached, it may be part of it, it may be a separate art element. But uh, the way that the two speed gearbox works is it's much like the clutch mechanism. But the clutch mechanism, of course, uh, the annular gear starts to spin when it's got too much force. In the case of a two-speed drill, you've got one element that will have an annular gear, something like this, which this has this groove around the circumference. That will contain a smaller planetary gear set. And what will happen is, when you've got uh, the gear, you have a switch on top, you move back and forth, that has is a simple lever that with a couple of prongs that go into the sides of this groove. They move this back and forth inside this section of the gearbox. And you see this gearbox actually has teeth cast into the plastic here. Those aren't actually gear teeth for uh, engaging with the planetary gears, they're for engaging with the annular gear. So, you notice this has these little slots in the side. This will go inside there and in one position the annular gear will be pushed forward and locked in place relative to the gearbox housing. But if you slide it back, it only slides it back, so oh, that's maybe even four millimeters. It slides it back just far enough that the annular gear can begin spinning freely. And just like the clutch mechanism, when it's spinning freely, it's not transmitting any power. So it's essentially removing a gear stage from the gearbox. And that's as simple as it is. But obviously, it's uh, 
not so friendly for hacking things together with really you. I can't think of a, an easy way that you could really engage that uh, remotely. You could use a server maybe, but it requires you a reasonable amount of force to push it back and forth. But um, I, to be honest, I think you're be better off if uh, you just wanted to use it on its own as a gearbox element. As I said, uh, these do tend to share component parts, and I believe uh, it's the initial gearbox. Oh, I may have picked up a bad one here, but uh, you see they are different sizes in this one actually. Yeah, this one's not one of the compatible ones. But uh, another one I had did uh, share the, the output gears were the same size as the output gears on the single speed. So that was quite useful to know, and I managed to give, give essentially allow me to upgrade it by uh, exchanging one of the gear sets for uh, another set. Now, what I saw uh, them do on the Pi minus one blog was because you've got these teeth here, you've got something that you can secure the annular gear to. And uh, what I'm planning to do is, uh, here's one was completely encapsulated in an aluminium block with a hole milled out, and I'm. This is steel. This is a. Uh, this is quite nice. It's, it's going to be very sturdy. So all you really need, I think, is to make uh, a recess in a plate. I'm going to go for making a recess in a plate with uh, some holes to accommodate the studs here that will stop it from turning in the plate. Then I can mill some uh, spaces in for some proper ball bearings, because as you might be able to see here, there's no ball bearings in here, that's something like an oilite uh, bearing, a bear, it's an impregnated metal bearing, bare metal, so it's metal on metal, but it's got uh, oil in it that uh, keeps it from wearing down. These are not meant for taking uh, lateral loads side to side, because obviously it's a drill, it's meant to push down. You do have in the end here, on this one, this one underneath that circlip there, there is a. Uh, it's, it's, it's only it's two washers with fuller ball bearings. It makes a very simple thrust bearing, which can take loads end on. So it's, it's good as a drill. But uh, if you decide to use this as a gearbox for actual move, like moving a robot or so forth, you're going to have problems. It will. It's going to be putting all that load on one side of the oil light bearing. That oil light bearing will eventually go oval, and it's. It may take years of continuous use, or year of, at least I say year of continuous use, I'd probably guess, but uh, yeah. Unfortunately, the diameter of the oil light bearing is really insufficient for mounting, uh, drilling it out, removing it, and putting in a ball bearing, so it, it's not ideal by any means. But uh, obviously if you're going to take out the, the guts of it, replace the housing here, this is obviously a lot larger than it needs to be, the oil light bearing takes up most of that uh, end section there. So you could shrink that down by at least half an inch. Uh, as I would be inclined to do, I mean this is uh, I believe an exact 10mm spindle there that's been turned down at the end. It's a nice mixture of old uh, imperial and metric measurements. But um, yeah, if you're going, if you didn't want the clutch mechanism, probably best just to try and tear it down, make a plate, just mount it up. You'd, you'd decrease the size of the whole thing a lot more, keep it all together, make it a lot tidier more resilient because obviously plastic it's going to break if it's in a hard wearing environment. Uh, personally I'm inclined to give this a try and uh, remount this with uh, brushless motors uh, to get more torque, more efficiency. But um, we'll see how that goes. But uh, when you start considering that you've also got to start considering the output gears here because I believe this has a 3mm spindle on the motor with a 9 pin Opinion, then you can't really drill that out, you're limited by uh, the size of the motor shaft for what you can accept. Uh, other, mo other, other drills do have bigger, bigger pinion gears, as in the case of uh, this one here, this one has I believe a 15 gear uh, pinion on the motor, wherever the motor's got to. But it's, it's worth keeping in mind, if you can get the cheap ones you can mix and match quite easily. With the dub two speeds or larger, more expensive ones, you are less likely to be able to mix, mix and match parts to get uh, custom assemblies going. But 
you could create some very high torque gearboxes if you had enough of them. It's worth keeping out an eye out for them, though uh, if you have one and have no particular inclination for it, I'd be glad to re receive it. Uh, I don't have a post office box or anything to send it to, I'm sure if you happen to pass the London Hack Space, uh, have a members box there and just drop it in. I'd be very happy to see one. Anyway, that's uh, my little exploration on these things, and uh, I might do a follow-up video at some point once I've got these uh, remounted into a more versatile housing. Okay, thank you, and good night.